Today we're going to demonstrate the sine and cosine curves and see what some of their uh, functions are and features. So what we have here is a circle and a graph. On the graph, it has the x-coordinate is uh, the degree of the angle, and the y-coordinate is simply the y-value. If I were to increase this x value to let's say 24 degrees you notice that the y value if you look on the left hand side is 0.391 so i've just graphed 23 degrees and 0.391 if i were to continue and stop here at 59 degrees i've now graphed the, the point where x is 59 and y is the sine of x which is 0.857 i could continue going um, up to let's see how let's see if we go up to 90 almost uh, there we go at 90 notice at 90 we reach 1 so the x value is 90 degrees and uh, the y value which is a sine of x is 1 and notice what happens after 90 degrees notice that the values start decreasing so that at let's say 143 degrees the sine of x is 0.602 and if I continue down, and let's see if we could get to 180 degrees, almost. And we're right there. Notice that 180 degrees when x is 180, the y value is a sine of x, and that's 0. And notice on the circle, we've now done a semicircle, and we've gone and, and done an angle of 180 degrees. Uh, notice as we continue um, at 185 degrees, now notice how the sine is now negative, so I stop here. We're now in the third quadrant of our circle, and notice that um, when x is 217 degrees, the sine value is negative, because that's the y value, and the y value in the third quadrant is negative. We continue on, notice how it's still negative, because we're still in the third quadrant, and we could finally, like at 254 degrees, the sine of 254 degrees is negative 0.961, so we're still in the third quadrant. And finally, we could get, see if we could get to 270 degrees exactly. Went a little bit past there, we're almost there. And there we go. Notice that 270 degrees, the sign is one. You might, this might seem familiar to you from the unit circle. And now if we continue this, we're now going to be in the fourth quadrant of our circle. Notice how the sign is still negative in the fourth quadrant and it'll still be negative until we finally get back to the beginning or rotation of 360 degrees. Let's see if we could get there. And we're almost there, a little bit past. Getting a little bit sticky there. Oh, almost had it. And there we are, 360 degrees. Notice that the sine of 360 degrees is zero. And we have generated the sine curve. So this is what the sine curve looks like. Um, notice how it starts, uh, it's positive, and eventually it goes all the way up to a maximum of 1, then it comes back down to 0, and then it's negative and goes down to negative 1, and finally comes back to the beginning again. So let's examine some of the features of the sine curve. So here's a sine curve with a little table of values beneath it for the x value and the sine. Notice that the sine of, uh, function is represented by f of x equal to sine of x, right here. And the sine curve, if you notice, has a range from negative 1 to 1. Notice that the highest point is at 1, and the lowest point is at negative 1. So the range is from negative 1 to 1. And that's true, because if you think about it, the values are pulled off the unit circle, and the values of the unit circle go from negative 1 to 1. The period of this function is considered 2 pi. We'll talk a little bit more about the period, but the period is simply uh, the point uh, where you, it goes through a full cycle and then starts repeating itself. So if I were to start um, over here, and notice if I trace the sine curve, it's not repeating itself until I finally get to 2 pi, and after 2 pi, it would start repeating itself. And notice, uh, uh, this uh, uh, curve uh, goes from 0 to 2 pi. So the range goes from negative 1 to 1. The period, which is one full cycle, goes from 0 to 2 pi. And now we'll quickly demonstrate the cosine curve. Notice that the cosine of 0 is at 1, 
and then it starts descending from there in the first quadrant until we get right to 90 degrees and notice that the, the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. And now as we enter the second quadrant, e, the uh, cosine is negative until we reach 180 degrees. And let's see if we could get there. And notice that the cosine of 100 degrees is negative one. We now continue into the third quadrant as the cosine starts increasing until we get to 270 degrees, just about there. And notice it's going to be uh, zero. And finally, the fourth quadrant, it's increasing. And finally, at 360 degrees, it comes back to back to one. Let's get it at 360 degrees. And there we are, we end at one. And that is one full cycle of the cosine curve. So let's examine this a little bit more carefully. So once again, notice the cosine curve has a range from negative one to one since it goes from a maximum of one, which is right here, to a minimum of negative one. Um, notice that the period that we talked about before goes from, uh, is one full cycle before it starts repeating itself. And notice that it doesn't repeat itself until we come all the way back here to pi or 360. And so the period, it goes from zero to two pi, and then it would start repeating itself. So just to review again what we mean by the period of a, tri of a trigonometric function, it's the time it takes to complete one full cycle. So this is the sine curve, and one full cycle is, goes through 2 pi, or 360 degrees. And notice that after 2 pi, it starts repeating itself again, um, and then it would continue repeating itself on and on. If I were to go in the other direction, um, notice that it would also go one full cycle of 360 degrees, but this in the negative direction until it gets to negative 2 pi. So that's what we mean by a period. It's, the, it's basically the time it takes or the distance it takes to complete one full cycle. Uh, if we look at the cosine curve, it works exactly the same way, except notice the cosine starts at 1 rather than at 0. So if it starts at 1, the next time it gets back to 1, is 2 pi radians later, or 360 degrees. And then it would just continue repeating itself on and on. If I go in the other direction, it would start repeating itself again after a negative 2 pi or negative 360 degrees, and so on. So that is, once again, what we mean by the period of, of a function. And notice that both the sine and cosine curves have a period of 2 pi or 360 degrees. The amplitude of a function, uh, a trigonometric function, can be found by taking the distance between the highest and lowest point and dividing by two. So here we have a sine curve. Notice that the highest point is right here, or the maximum point. That's at one, so the maximum point is equal to one. Notice that the minimum point, or the lowest point, is at negative one, so the minimum point is negative one. And if we wanted to find the amplitude, it's simply the max minus the min divided by 2, which is 1 plus 1 over 2, which is equal to 2 over 2, which is 1. So the amplitude is equal to 1. Okay, And an easy way of seeing that is if we just look um, right from the center of, of the graph right here, notice it, ne it goes up a distance of 1 and goes down a distance of 1. That's really what it means. So from the center of the graph, um, what, how high does it go up and how high does it go down? It's always very symmetrical. The easy way to find it is simply subtracting, uh, saying the maximum minus the min over 2, and we get our answer. So over here, this was our max. This was our min, and we got our amplitude. Now, the same thing works for the cosine function, exactly the same. And you'll even notice that the answer will come out the same. Notice that the maximum is at 1. The minimum is equal to negative 1. And 
maximum minus the minimum over 2 is equal to 1 minus a negative 1 over 2, and that becomes 2 over 2 or 1. So the amplitude of both the sine and cosine functions are 1. And finally, we're going to be talking about the midline of a function. It's simply the, a line that goes right through the center of the function. Um, so, and it can be found, we find the average of the highest and lowest points. So notice the highest point here is at 1. So once again, the maximum is equal to 1. The minimum is equal to 1. And the average of the two is simply the max plus the min over 2, which is 1 plus a negative 1 over 2. And that becomes 0 over 2, or 0. And you will notice that the midline of this function is simply line that goes right through the center of it, and that would be at the line y equals 0. And we'll just write y equals 0 there. And there we go. So the midline in the sine function is at y equals 0. And you will also notice that in the cosine function, it works exactly the same way. You'll probably could easily see that the midline, once again, is right there. And once again, the max is at 1. The min is at negative 1. And the max plus the min over 2 is equal to 1 plus a negative 1 over 2, and that becomes 0. That's because the, the graph, the equation of this line is y equals 0. And so we see the midline for both the sine and cosine functions, uh, the midline for the sine and cosine functions is 0, or y equals 0. And that's it for today. Um, we do have one more thing now for you to do. It's your turn. What we do want you to do is uh, answer the following questions. They're all listed here, so you might want to pause this, answer all these questions, and good luck, and see you again next time.